Hey you guys, it's Crystal Lee and I am so, so, so excited about today. I am right now, if you can see behind me, it says Never Broke Nation. I am in the office of one of my favorite people, my mentor, her name is Janai Thornton. And if you have been following my channel, you already know I talk about uh, my bankruptcy. I talk about, I don't even know if I've talked about it lately, my student loans. I got a lot, a lot of student loans. And I am on um, the radio and every single Monday we have Money Monday with yes. Janai. And um, I am in her office right now for two different reasons. <laughs> yes, two. One of them is that I want to talk about entrepreneurship. I always talk about your t-shirt business. I always talk about, you know, you taking your, your life to the next level and right. really living your passion and your purpose. And I also want to talk about like how to not stay broke. Like right. I know this is never broke nation, <laughs> right, 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 but I want right. to talk about like if you are broke right now, how do you not right? Stay broke? How do you not stay broke? Right. Or you know, how do you like get to a place where you are comfortable right. with money? And this is like the money maven. Right. Um, my, she's my personal therapist, <laughs> big sister, a lot mentor. Of, a lot of late night phone calls. A lot of late night, <laughs> 11, 12, one hour phone calls. Like this lady has just taken she is taking my mindset to a whole nother level. I mean, literally after bankruptcy, I have no credit card debt right now. I'm tackling my student loans. Like I didn't bought a new car, y'all. Yeah. Like <laughs> she has literally not just changed my finances and the way I spend money, but helped me change my mindset. So today I really, really, really want to talk about this with Jenna. Hey girl, so happy to have you on my channel. So first, like, yeah. let's just talk about being broke. For somebody who is struggling with money right, right. now, like, right. is there a way out? Is there a way to like not be broke? Um, I mean, there is a way. And I think people think because I understand money and I talk about money, I think people think I've always had money. Right. And it's not true. You know, because you know my story. I had my first child in college at 21. Um, my husband and I, who were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, right. we had absolutely nothing. So I know what it is to struggle right. and what that looks like. And so the, it, it's really two parts to me. Part of it is um, having the mindset of actually being open to making more money. Right. Because you can only do so much with what you have. Right, right, so right. if you're talking about next level living, you're gonna have to bring in more income. Okay. But what I've noticed talking to a lot of people, a lot of people don't even believe that that's possible. For right, them. Yeah. and that's why I ask, like, is it possible to not be broke? Because I know even in our conversations, right. You know, we talk to people who have never not been broke, right. whether they're the 30, lives. 40, 50, you have never not struggled. And I know that there are some lives. of you who may be like, oh my gosh, that's me right now. Right. I do not know how to not live right. paycheck to paycheck. Right, right. And it is, it's a shift for people. And so what I noticed for some people, some people have to take these little baby gradual steps and some people are like, bam. Like go in the 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 phone booth and come back out right. like a whole new person. Exactly. Like, I'm not broke no I'm more. Not broke. And it's just like who are you in that part? And so it's like where where are you gonna begin in the journey? And I know for me it was I knew how to manage money, but I wasn't making enough money. Okay. And so I finally had to come to terms with the fact, like, this is not the life that I want for myself. Okay. This is not the life that I want for my family. This is not the life that I want for my children. Like I want to make considerably more money. And then once I started sitting with that, I'm like, let's go. I didn't know what to do, but I'm like, we have to do it. Was something. It was something. And I just began the steps of entrepreneurship. So okay. I'm not saying that you can't be wealthy and have a regular job, but the reality is you have to have multiple sources of income. And that's one of the key things that I learned in starting a business. You know, in my basement, right. on a folding table with a computer. That's literally how I started creating another source of income. I just got really in tune with what I knew how to do. And so I'm like, and then how can I capitalize? Right. Meaning, how can I make money off of my skill set? And what my skill set was, was accounting, taxes. I've gone to school for that. Okay, so let's talk about a skill set, right? right? So there's two ways for you to make more money. So right. either you become an entrepreneur, right. or you get another source of income. An, or an, a, another job. Okay, or another job. Right. So when it comes to entrepreneurship, right. I have a lot of people that follow me who they want a t-shirt business, right. uh, they want to write a book, they want to uh, be in ministry, you right. know, all of these things. And it's like, how do you do that? You are in the basement, right. and she's very modest, but she is like, a, 
works with Ludacris right. and Future right. and all of these big superstars. Like, how do you get from the basement right. to, you know? Well, know that that was not overnight or right away. But everybody thinks that it's oh an overnight God. social media. I'm going to be, I, I got right. it. And most people don't make it because of what you're saying because it takes five times as long and it costs 10 times as much as what you thought. Like entrepreneurship is a journey. Like you have to be prepared for the long haul. And so it took years. So I began to make a little bit of money and I think I probably started around 1996. Okay. And 2000 was the first year that I began to make money. real money. Okay. Yeah, I began to make more money. And I think the best financial decision I ever made was when I really started making money, we didn't move. Okay. We didn't upgrade anything in our lives for five years. Okay. And we stayed there, same level of living, and that allowed us to get that peace that you're talking about. Because it's, I'm not saying money solves all your problems, but I assure you it's very different. When you have some money to make and something comes <laughs> Hello? up. Hello? And you're like, okay, cool. Right. I need four new tires. Okay, cool. My relatives need X. Then you can just write the check and right. have a different level of peace. But entrepreneurship is a lot of work. And the problem that I see is most people think it's just going to happen like this because they have a great idea. Right. Because they have a dope book. Right. Or they have, it's not it. Like you have to dig in. And so the other thing too is to take a lot of stress off people in this journey of entrepreneurship, you probably want to have another source of income coming in. Okay, so that means that you know maybe you have your job or and then you're starting your business? I would consider that because okay. people think I'm just gonna out the gate, you're gonna make all this money. That happens for some people, but for the majority of us, that's not true. And we've talked about this on the air. Mm -hmm. It's taken, it takes a lot longer. So I'm not saying don't quit your job, but maybe can you work part time? Right. How much money do you have saved? How long are, can you last? Because maybe it's not gonna take off in three months. What if it takes 18 months? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Because who wants to have pressure right. of not being able to pay your right. bills? And that ruins relationships. Mm -hmm. It ruins your credits. And it's just, how can you be creative? How can you grind? And someone's getting ready to repossess your car. Right. It's right. very hard to do that. But you got to prepare for the long haul. People think it's like this. And right. generally, it's not. Okay. And we definitely got to stop being like, God told me to leave this job. I'm out of here. Peace <laughs> out, y'all. I'm, I'm on faith. Like, you know, like, you got to really have a plan. So if you're in a position right now and you, you know, maybe you have a job and you're not making the money you want to, right. or maybe, you know, you are an entrepreneur not making the money you want to, it will take some time. So let's kind of walk through that. So that's our step one. Right. So maybe you need another job or maybe you need a source to, of income. Another source of income. How are you going income. to pay your bills that are not going to stop? Right. right. So then after that, like, are we supposed to be saving? Like, what do we do to get out of, you know, maybe a financial hole, a, a financial hole that we're in? Like, right. what do we do to get out of this situation? Right. I think, well, you're speaking to a key um, part of it, which is, first of all, it's the new habit of saving. Because for a lot of us, that's completely new to us. Right. It's always been that struggle. It's always been check to check. We don't come from a family that we're used to people just having money sitting around. So I, what I encourage people to do is please separate yourself from your money. Okay. And what I mean by that, and I mean being literal. So if you are, if you do have a job, you need to have a certain amount. I don't care if it's $5 a check. It needs to go to a bank. That is not where you typically bank when you have very little access to that. This this girl that I follow, she got she gave the most bomb advice. Right. And it was learn how to lose your money. Right. Because you know, if you lose some money, you lose twenty dollars, right. you don't think about it anymore. Maybe right. you're mad about it right. and then you'd be like, you Okay, I got I gotta get over it. Right. We gotta start learning how to lose twenty dollars a check and be like, it's gone. It ain't that big of a deal. Right. But that's why you gotta separate yourself right from the beginning versus after the money comes. Mm -hmm. And then people don't treat savings like a bill. Right. Like, why is it after you do everything else? Like, you figured out how to do all that other stuff. Why can't you put saving up at the top? And I think it's about developing that habit and that muscle. Right. And then your life, it literally will begin to change because when you see that progression, it gives you that you confidence. Some that more, some more, some more. It gives right. you confidence. So to me, that's really the beginning of changing that habit and getting out of that life. And just because you come from that, doesn't mean you have to continue that. Right. And I think that's, it's just, we don't even question it. 
we just kind of fall into the routine of what's normal. Yeah, that's our mindset. It's right. like, I can never not be broke. Right. Like, I'm always going to be like this. Right. And I know that people are struggling, and that's the reason why we want more. We want a t-shirt business. Right. We want a business because right. we don't want to you know, live like this. We don't want that life. And I think a lot of it, too, is I think a lot of us just have the wrong money role models. Okay. Because our role models, we're selecting them by what people have, what we see versus mm -hmm. what they really have for real. And right. you don't get to put that on display. Right. You know, if you have a million dollars in the bank or you own 20 houses, who is talking about that on Instagram? You, right. you don't get to see that. Right, right, right. So we need to redefine what that role, that money role model is for us. Like, for real, for real. So we got your book here. Yes. 99 Tips. Yes to Never Go Broke, yes. which is available for sale, and it'll yes. be linked below. So what are some of the tips in this book that you really, really want to point out to people for them to not be broke? Like, that's our goal in life. Right, and so how I really came up with this content is being on the radio, which is funny, I've been in radio, I don't know, for like 20 years. But I swear to you, in 20 years, the questions have not changed. Wow. It's exactly the same. Wow. And what are some of the like common ones? Well, people, it's all about saving money, mm -hmm. it's about credit, mm -hmm. and then about those major purchases. Okay. Buying a home, okay. buying a car. Because okay. really, when you think about money, it's really just in those kind of segments. Right. Making more of it, right. and then what do we do with it right. once we get it. And some of my favorite topics are couples and money. I love mm -hmm. talking about that. And then one of our favorites, which is the whole student loan. Oh, God. <laughs> Gosh! You gotta talk about it. Yes. yes! So what do you do for a lot of people who have student loan debt? Yes. Like, um, the first step that myself and Janai went through was I didn't even know how much money I owed. Like, right. I just knew I was like, somebody asked me, how much you owe? A lot. Right. I found out after Janai said go and face it that I owe like over $200,000 in student loans. Right. Lord. Right. So for somebody who has student loan debt, but you can't barely pay the bill, right. how do you deal with that? Right, and so part of it is, uh, have you done all the basics? And what I mean by basics are, have you done the consolidation? If you have all these different loans, because I talk to people all the time, six, seven, eight different loans. Why? What? Put all your federally backed loans together. Mm -hmm. Can you consolidate them? And then all of your private loans from, you know what I mean by that, like normal banks, can you just put all those together? Okay. Can you refinance them possibly? What have you done for that? And then the other thing too is, this is where you have to double down, and this is where the more income comes in. Because mm -hmm. people are trying to get out of this based on their current income situation. If you want to be completely debt free of student loans, you're going to have to make more money. So the bottom line, the bottom line is period. We just got to make more money. I think that's a big part of it, and be really open to that being a possibility. Okay. But again, it's about being very specific. When you have these different sources of income, that income has to have a job and a purpose. Right. It's not just 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 to kind of keep things going. If you have this other source of income, is it just to pay down debt? Right. Is it to buy your new house? Is it to get out of student loans? I mean, people are paying off their student loans, but they're very intentional about that. Okay. Most people have just made the decision, oh, I owe 100000 I owe 200 I owe 40 I'm just going to pay this the rest of my life. Well, you might as well just say amen at the end of that, because then it's true. Amen. <laughs> Right. You've made a decision that right. you're going to take your entire adult life to pay it off versus mm -hmm. saying, you know what, I want to have these paid off in 10 years. And, and you can do that without winning the lottery for right. that to happen, but how can you get very intentional? But it, it's hard to think about paying off $200,000 in student loan debt if you don't even think you can make $200,000. Right. And, and that's the mindset. Huh? That's part of the mindset too, okay. but you have to be open to that to say, hey, I'm going to deal with this. Why are we putting, you know, if you're a believer, why why is it that God can do all these other things? But, but he can't give it, we can't fix our money. What, what in the world? That, why? You can't do it. Right. You know, it's about being open. And again, heaven's not going to open up and it's not going to all be perfect. And that's one thing that I'm very grateful and appreciative to the Willie Moore Jr. show is because that level of faithfulness of right. talking about money every week, that's how things change. Right. You can't pick it up and put it down occasionally when you have a problem. Like You have to be faithful and you have to be on it. We talk about it on Mondays. My husband and I, we have our money meeting on Wednesdays. Right. Like you got to be committed to it. It's like working out every three weeks. What's that going to do for you? Right. Nothing. You know, and it's the same thing with money. So with all of this, Credit cards, yes. student loans, yes. you know, bills. 
So the first thing is we need to make some more money. Do we need to be budgeting? What do we need? What are some tools that we can give to say, um, these are some great things for you to start doing? Yeah. Um, I mean, budgeting is critical. And okay. I tell people, budget is not a bad word. Right. People act like it's just this horrible, restrictive. It, all it means is I know exactly what's coming in and I know exactly what's going out. That's all that means. So it, you, you have to know what's happening. How are you gonna make any changes? And so I think people need to use what's modern and current. Okay. So whether it's some of these apps, like I like Mint. You know, because I like it because you can set those um, limits, those budget right. limits. Yeah, they say. send me emails like, you a little older, uh, <laughs> <laughs> bring it on back. I'm like, okay. But we need that awareness because now we're in the swiping. Right. You know, everyone right. is just swiping. And no one is carrying cash around. Right. Like, how much did you spend on food last week? Right. Last month. How much, you know, how much did you spend on gas last month? You need to know it just like this. And when you begin to see those numbers, you're going to be like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, this cannot be real. But it is real. Then you'll understand what you're really capable of doing. So everybody, particularly for those of us as entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship is not bringing money in and just paying your bills. Like, what is coming in from where? And then what bills do you have to pay? How much did you spend last week? How much did you spend last month in real time? We think we only think about it when we do our taxes. Right. No. How else do you know how to make changes within your business? Right. 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 It's so much info, though. It's like, I don't... <laughs> It's like I could be asking you these questions right. all day long. And I know that people have questions. So this is what I want to do. Um, I would love to give somebody who is watching this who is like, I need some financial help. I got specific questions. Right. I would love to give them a money makeover. We're going to do it. So we're going to do a giveaway. <laughs> and we're going to give somebody a money makeover. So, so all you have to that. do to enter is to comment below. You have to yes. comment below um, with your name, with your email, and just tell us just a general, like what's going on? What do you need help with? Yep. Um, because we can sit here and talk all day. I really right. just wanted her to be here just to kind of help you because a lot of you are excited about your t-shirt business. You're right. excited about what you feel like God is calling you to do. Right. But the reality is, what, what do we always say on the show? Right. Salvation is free, right. but ministry costs. It like costs. it costs money for us to go out here Absolutely. And, and live these dreams and right. do what we gotta do. And the money is not just gonna no. come. God is not just gonna have the no. money it's sprinkling down. It's I'm just not, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. No. So we have to make real, real change in order right. to make something happen. So before we even move even further with t-shirts, I really wanted you guys to to see Janai and to hear what she has to say. So comment below, make sure you subscribe, Please. make sure you go check her out. I'm going to leave all of her info below. So Janai, do you have like any last words you wanna give? I know we can't like say it all today, but Absolutely. for the very first step for the person who was like, I'm so ready to change my life. Right. What do you have to say to them? Uh, I think what's most important when you think about money is People think you have to be moving at zero or a hundred. I want you to move at zero five. Zero to a hundred. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So I want you to pick one or two things that you're going to focus on this month. And then I want you to pick one or two things that you're going to focus on the next month. Okay. And I want you to pick one or two things. And then that way you'll see the progression. And that way you'll feel good versus saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm not saying that you can't. But you, a lot of times you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Mm -hmm. So what are the main two things that are urgent for the current month? And then plan it out that way, then you'll see your progression over the year. Boom. Boom. <laughs>